people think that they know politicians, but you don't. You only know of us. You only have access to our image. And I think it's important to kind of humanize what I believe is a wonderful, honorable pursuit. And if I could do anything at all with a book, my greatest intention would be to hopefully inspire young people to make a difference through politics. I think at heart, while we all layer ourselves with the What's thin... What's the title of the book again? That's great. Making a difference. Making a difference. I think we all layer ourselves with um, a veneer of cynicism in order to protect ourselves against disappointment. That's only natural. It's a very human thing to do. But I think at heart, we yearn to make a difference. And there are all kinds of ways in life that we can make a difference. And one of those happens to be through politics. So let me, that was the law. Let me be a little bit more uh, challenging. Provocative. Uh, picking up your cynicism point. Most of, I mean, here at the university, the professoriate likes to think of themselves uh, as challenging the conventional wisdom. And the students, we think, are being prepared for this. So the cynics who read your article in the Globe and Mail this morning, or who read your uh, book, or read the chapter called, uh, in hindsight in particular, uh, would say, oh, he's just trying to rewrite history. He's trying to set his own uh, standard for what actually happened. But I remember what really happened. So what do you say to the cynics? Uh, I'm not one of them. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, my, my best advice to politicians and aspiring politicians is to ignore the cynics. Um, the last chapter, as you know, Mel, I... I uh, I call it lessons in leadership. Uh, and one of those is that I say that leaders have to um, um, retain your idealism. You work in a fairly corrosive environment. Uh, it can be toxic, and it's a full body contact sport. Uh, and many of the forces are aligned to take pleasure uh, in your misfortunes. I have all kinds of friends that I made in the media, uh, but they would love it if I got into trouble. Uh, and, and I think you need that sense of idealism um, uh, this, um, in terms of what people can do working together to overcome challenges and build something, build something better. So there will always be the cynics. And uh, the other, you know, I quote Kant in there, who once said wonderfully so, um, out of the crooked timber of humanity, nothing straight was ever made. And government uh, is... Um, made up exclusively of human beings with all of our noble strengths and our contemptible weaknesses. And what counts, I think, coming back to the sense of idealism, are the ideals that inspire our efforts and the integrity of those efforts and how we apply ourselves every single day to do the very best that we can. Kind of brings me to something else of Mike Mel that I talk about because it kind of speaks to this is I distinguish between reputation and character. Reputation is who people think you are. Character is who you truly are. And one of the, my advice to leaders is you better put your character ahead of your reputation. Right? How do you do that? Take a poll every night. Stand in front of the mirror. Ask yourself, are you doing the right thing? Not the easy thing, not the expedient thing, not the convenient thing, not the comfortable thing. Are you doing what you honestly think is the right thing to do? And the amazing thing is if you protect your character, if you do what you honestly believe is the right thing, that can, over time, translate into popularity. It turns out people prefer conviction over convenience. Character, reputation, protect your character.